chapter 19, 11 to 13. Uh, let us read it together. The Lord says, Go out and stand on the mountain in the presence of the Lord. For the Lord is about to pass by. And the great and powerful wind over the mountains apart and shattered the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. At the wind there was an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. At the earthquake came a fire. But the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire came a gentle whisper. And the eyes of the he pulled his spot over his face and went out and stood at the mouth of the cave. And the voice said to him, What are you doing here, Elijah? Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. And today's title is God's Silent and Soft Voice. For three weeks, over three weeks, I, I talked about the Elijah and Elijah narratives. The Elijah, Elijah narrative is focusing on raining. So, you know, according to weather forecasting, today, you know, Sunday we have a barbecue party. So I thought, you know, weather forecasting, talking about predicting this Sunday, today, raining. But you know, as you see outside, no raining, hallelujah. <laughs> we kept checking the weather forecasting, you know, uh, application, so whether you may or not, no raining. <laughs> So somebody, somebody, somebody might speak, you know, because the Pastor Yang continued to talk about the raining in Elijah. That's why raining. Oh, no rain. Wow. <laughs> so I'm so happy today. So last Sunday, I talked about uh, Elijah under the rodent tree. And then uh, uh, he, he could listen to the voice of God. And then uh, uh, over 40 days and 40 nights, and he want, he want to go to the, the mountain of Horeb, uh, which uh, in dwell, God dwells in the mountain. And today, the scriptures are very important to understand the existence of God. How can we understand God? Do you, you know, God is around us. We can feel the scripture talking about God's existence, three topics. Number one, wind. Number two, earthquake. And number three, fire. What does this scripture talk, uh, talk, of, talk to us? So let us know about the, the meaning. And let us read together. God is around us. Okay? God is around us. And 1 Kings chapter 19, verses 11 and 12a. So let us read it together. Ready? Go. The Lord said, Go out and stand on the mountain in the presence of the Lord. For the Lord is about to pass by. Then a great and powerful wind tore the mountains apart and shattered the glass before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. At the wind there was no spirit. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. At the earthquake came a fire, but the Lord was in the fire. Wind blowing. We can feel, you know. Now you see the AC uh, condition. We see you know, wind touch and we know, oh, wind. But we cannot see the wind, how it looks like. It's like a God exists around us. But we don't know how he looks like. But we know why Jesus Christ, through Jesus Christ, we know how God looks like. And how about the uh, fire? We don't know how it happened, but based upon our knowledge, because of the heat, that's why we can know the heat over there. And then the lastly, earthquake. Have you experienced earthquake? Is there anyone who experienced yeah, earthquake? Yeah, okay. Yeah. Well, thank you. Okay. <laughs> when I was in U.S. California, uh, I still remember the, the Friday night. I put a copy to the paper, paperwork, and then I, and then I can feel something. I could feel 
the, the, the bottom is moving. I, I tried to escape from there, but I could have not. You know, earthquake, whoa, I trembled. I was so scared. But, uh, you know, earthquake happened. Around us, God is around us. But we don't know how He looks like, but I'm here. Here, this place, the Holy Spirit, God exists around us. Let me tell you about my personal story. When I was a college student, I went to my father's church every weekend from Seoul to Iksan area by bus uh, for three hours. And then I, I taught as elementary teacher for my students. And one of my female students, she always curious about the, the existence of God. I explained about that God created heaven and earth and say something, blah, blah, blah. And then she said, teacher, do you know Big Bang Theory? No, elementary school student, she said to me, Big Bang Theory. And she said, I don't believe in God. I don't believe in God. Can you explain? Can you explain? So that time I was too young. Uh, I could not explain specifically, but I, can, I, I said to her, Personally, I met God. That's why I can share God exists. And then, three days later, I visited her house because she absent, you know, in our uh, mission school. That's why I went to her house and I met her. And she said, and closely, and she looked at my eyes and she raised her hand, her finger, toward the sky, and she said, Where is God? Where is God? I don't believe. And one week later, I've heard about the news about her. She got car accident. While she closed on the street, she got the car accident. So me and my father, we visited the hospital. Her leg is broken. And I went to her, and she looked at me, and she said, No, I believe in God. <laughs> you know, because of car accident, she, she, and she understood God exists around her. You know, we don't know our destiny when we die. We don't know. But today is a special day. We live here. God is with us. Hallelujah. And next, uh, the German scholar, his name is Julian Moitman, he talked about uh, the crucified God because September 11 over the suffering, the issue of suffering, how can we understand our suffering, our pain? When Jesus Christ was crucified on the cross, where is God? So many people, they asked about the existence of God. And William Moitman, the German scholar, he mentioned, when Jesus Christ was crucified, that day, God was also crucified on the cross together. When you suffer, do you have any pain? That time, our God is also together suffering with us. You know, Ukraine, Russia, where so many people devastated, they got sufferings. And you might just say, where is God? Where is God? God is also suffering together. You know, I was thinking about the suffering, the issue of pain, the sin. In the book of Genesis, the Eden, God of Eden, God is with us. But people, Adam and the evil, they left God. And what happened next? Cain, Adam's first son Cain, he killed his brother Abel, right? That time, God is looking at the human beings. God gave us free will. We can choose good things or bad things. God is looking at us that time. You know, likewise today, God is looking at us. We can, we should choose 
God's way, good things. God exists around the earth. And second, let us get together. Let us listen to God's silent and soft voice. And let us read the first Kings chapter 19, verse 12 and 13. After the Lord's feet came on fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after fire came a gentle whisper. When the lights heard it, he pulled his cloak over his face and went up and stood at the mouth of the cave. Then a voice said, Why do we hear Elijah? What is a gentle whisper? Wind, oil creek, fire, the lastly, a gentle whisper. And I read the Bible in Hebrew. You know, I'm not, <laughs> I will not say, you know, I'm not a Hebrew scholar expert and then, oh, I'm proud of my knowledge. No, 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 no. Because I want to be humble. I want to read the Bible exactly what the Bible says to me. So when I read the Bible in Hebrew, I found it very interesting. The New Inter International Bible version, English version, they translate Hebrew words the mama and daka as gentle whisper. The Hebrew word the mama means silent. The Hebrew word daka means fine or soft. So repeat that to me. The mama. The mama. The mama. The mama means silent. The, you know, our Korean worship, you know, uh, every Friday, we have a daman prayer, the meeting. That meeting, prayer meeting, silent to stop and pause and try to listen to the voice of God then mama so you know just listen very carefully let me tell you the mama the mama how's your feelings Olivier when I say to you the mama <laughs> when you have a baby where is I know when you have a baby Baby, first time he or she mentioned mama. <laughs> mommy, mommy. Mommy. Oh, honey, you there. Yeah, yeah. Your son and daughter might say, oh, they would say father, but they say mama. Mommy. Yeah, then mama. Silent. Listen. The, the voice of a mother, the voice of God. Stop. When you, when you think about the prayer, Speak louder. Oh, Father, listen to the voice of me. Father, Father. And you say everything and you stress. Oh, oh God is not my prayer. <laughs> but stop. Be silent and listen to the voice of God like the voice of mother. And the voice of mother, soft. Daka. So repeat after me. Daka. <laughs> it's like the, the, the sound of a baby. The mama daka. <laughs> the mama daka. Silent and soft. It's a very important when you pray. Let me tell you the last story because we have a barbecue party after which place. <laughs> well, we, I, when I was a theological seminary student, one of my best friends, uh, he, he prayed a lot. He especially you know, speak louder. He went to the building, the prayer building, and prayed for what? Uh, his future wife. <laughs> but that time he had no girlfriend. But every day, every night, he spoke a lot. Father, listen to my prayer. Listen to my prayer. Where is my girlfriend? Where is my future wife? <laughs> and then, he met some beautiful a female student. Uh, her name is Unhe. And he prayed for her every day, every night. Father, please give me Unhe for me. <laughs> Change her mind, Father. <laughs> and then after he prayed for her, and then he I met her, I met my friend, and he said, Oh! God respond to my prayer. God 
uh, to my heart. I, I, now I can say, I'm going to get married to Une. Hallelujah. And he <laughs> went to Une directly. And, and, and I said, hey, please don't go there. Don't go there. Please do not tell. I'm going to marry to you. Please do not tell. And he went there. And he met Une. And he said, I, was, I got the God's response. And God responded to my prayer. I'm going to get married to you. And Unhe, she said, Who are you? <laughs> he never said, <laughs> He never cared about that. She never cared about him. You know? So think about it. When you pray, stop, pause, just be silent, and try to catch the voice, kind of the mother, soft, the voice of God. The voice of God. And Elijah, when he heard about the voice of God, his attitude, his eye, his face, his clothes, and he tried to listen to the voice of God. It means, we, I want to hire my desire. I want to listen to the voice of God, the, the voice of mother, soft mother and soft. Now, let us pray together, let us praise together, Listen to the voice of God. So now let's pray this song together. Uh, humble here. Heal our land together. Especially uh, pray for Ukraine. Uh, so many people, they got hurt here. And we need to pray the healing the land. So let us pray this song together.
And lastly, how about let us be silent like the mama and daka and soft and mother the voice. You know, you see the, the wind blowing, but we know the direction of how the wind looks like, we don't know. Almost a fire and oil quick. But we know God and Jesus around us. And now it's time to listen to the voice of God. And God, please come to my heart, come to my family, come to my workplace. Let's pray together. That's why He sent His only Son for us. May we listen to Your silent and soft voice, rather than listening to our own voice, our desire, and following our desires. And let us listen to Your warm mother, the voice of a silent and soft voice. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> uh,